Hello, this is Adam, N4NT, with Ham Radio Zone. And what I want to talk to you about today is the N3FJP contest logging software. Uh, this is not a officially endorsed video from N3FJP or anything like that. This is just uh, using the software based on my personal experiences, uh, how you can use it with... Uh, just the basic setup of reading the rig and using it with the uh, uh, sideband and then also how to use it with uh, FT8 programs, uh, that kind of thing. So what you want to do first is uh, go here to your n3fjp.com. I just Google it. Um, in fact, I'll back up here. When I Google it, you can go straight to contest logs and it's a little bit different than uh, like the N1MM loggers where you download a single program and then select your contest and update it ever so often. Uh, this one you've actually got uh, individual programs for uh, for each contest and you can come back to the site each year or so, however so often that the uh, contests occur and download the latest version of that. I kind of I like that. It's a little bit simpler to use the log itself. Um, and you can always uh, save these logs in uh, ADIF or uh, Varelo files and, and get rid of the, the software itself, um, or it doesn't take up that much. So I just uh, hang on to it from year to year and, uh, and then just overwrite it with an update if that's, uh, if that's what happens. So for 2020, of course, field day software is updated because they've made some rule exceptions. So for next year, if those rule exceptions go away, then... Uh, you would need to download a new version of this software. I've already downloaded this, but I'll show you. I just go right here and click on field day. And then I would, normally I would click right here to download the contest log now, which I already have. And you go through the normal, uh, and this is Windows here, the normal Windows procedures of downloading uh, like you would anything else. And of course it shows you here the, uh, some of the changes and features and that kind of thing. Um, Again, this YouTube channel has not been paid to endorse anything in particular, and we welcome any videos about any software that anyone would like to do. Um, I would probably not be the best choice to do a video for N1MM, although I have used it. It's one of those that, um, to me, is so complicated, I can't explain it to someone else. But this one, I feel pretty good about. I've, I'll tell you, uh, I will give them a quick testimonial or whatever. Um, Back in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere along in there, um, I discovered the N3 FJP logging software. I uh, paid somewhere in the neighborhood of 16, 17 bucks back then to get a copy of it. It's what I've used ever since. Over the years, I have replaced computers. I have uh, took extended abs absences from the, ho the hobby to come back and try to figure out what I did with my username and password. Um, I actually was gone for about 10 years living in a townhouse, didn't operate HF, so I didn't uh, have a use for any kind of logging software when I got back into it. I thought, you know, they've they've been so great to email me my password and, uh, and really accommodating that I'm just going to go ahead and pay them again and get another copy of it. I've changed call signs, this, this kind of thing, you know, why not? Uh, they actually emailed me back. And said, hey, you don't have to buy another copy of this. We've got a record from 19-whatever that you had purchased this software. And I guess I had updated my call sign with them. And they sent me another password or, or my password, whatever the case may be. And didn't charge me an extra dime to uh, get the program. Um, the contest software to get licenses or whatever you want to call it for that uh, does cost extra Um above and beyond the normal logging program, but I have used it for several contests, and in my humble opinion, it is well worth it. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. They send you a, an email that you plug in your call sign and whatever the password for the particular logging program you need is, and you're good to go. You can print that off or do like I did and save it in a PDF copy in two or three different places in case this computer crashes. It's on the hard drive and on a thumb drive and all that kind of stuff. All right, so we've, uh, we've, I've already downloaded 
um, the AWRL Field Day Contest Law version 6.3. So let's go to that. Um, we'll open that bad boy up, and here it is. Um, initially, in fact, let me uh, exit out of that, and I will show you uh, what comes up. Okay, so you get this screen right here where you put in your, your information. Uh, you can uncheck this always display. I do that for my main logging program. For this one, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to use it for a 24 hour period and put it away and won't use it again until next year. So you can, if you're going to be opening and closing the program over the course of field day, you can uncheck this and it'll get rid of that for you. I, I will just pretty much open everything and leave it open. And then when field day's over, I'll export my log and call it a day, close it. All right, so one of the first things you want to do is come over here to settings. And there are lots of features to this program. I'm going to show you the, the basic ones that I use. Um, so this is definitely not all inclusive, but this will get you on the air. Go to, uh, go to your rig interface, click on that. I'm going to bring that over here where you can see it. Wrong one. There we go. That was the software I'm using to make this video. Uh, I have a Yaesu FT991A. Um, so it's uh, for me, it's going to be uh, you come over here and find your uh, particular rig. And what I'll do is I'll tell it none. And I'm going to come back over here and start over just so I can walk you through the process. Um, it does not say 991A here, but 991, 991A for this logging program are essentially the same. Select your rig, select your COM port, um, which is going to mine assigned five and six. It's usually the lower number on the FT991s. Um, and I use the uh, 38.4 baud rate. Everything else should pretty much be correct. Uh, mode determined by rig frequency or do not use. That's a matter of personal preference. I leave it on rig. Um, then you want to test that. So it's going to pull the rig. And 7.074 that's where I'm at uh, so that is correct uh, you can also have it change the frequency just hit this send button down here and it just changed the frequency and as you can see it's reading that it's changed that frequency so it's pretty simple that's that's pretty much it there again there are other features to this and you can get more in depth to to this this is a uh, fairly basic this will get you started you can Operate any mode you want to for field day, and this thing is going to read it. So I hit done. Uh, another thing you want to do, if you're going to operate FT8, uh, if you're going to use FL Digi, anything like that, come over here to settings and come down here to application program interface, API, and just enable that. Um, most of the time, if you haven't messed with it, your FT8 software should have this 1100 port running already so you just click that don't mess with anything down here this is just to interface with other n3 fjp programs i don't bother with that basically i'll um i do like to upload my contest logs to my main log i just wait till i'm done and i take that same cabrillo file or the ADI, adif file that i send in and i'm sorry i send in the cabrillo i may maybe i, I might make an adif file something like that and I just upload that to my contest log. Hit done here. And this thing's fairly simple. Uh, you can just type in a call sign right here. Hit tab. Um, if it is a duplicate, it'll come up here in this, in this box and uh, say dupe, depending on the contest. Um, some contests allow you to duplicate rovers if they move. Um, and that's that. You can uh, you can do several things with this. Um, you can set up DX spotting. Um, I have that in my main logging program. I don't always set it up for a contest because I know it just could drive things crazy. You can use this program to uh, help you with uh, like pre pre program macro macros for CW and uh, phone setup. Um, I don't fool with those. My uh, FT nine ninety one has those built in, and I just Use the ones in the face of the radio. They're a little simpler to, to set up. Um, but this thing will keep a running score. If you uh, if you start dialing, if you look down here in the bottom portion, if you start turning the uh, tuner dial, it will it will follow along. It'll lag just a hair. 
Uh, let's change modes. Now we're in digital, so I'm in data mode. All right. There's a little uh, trick to this thing, and someone out there may know there may be a better way. N3FJP might watch this video one day and say, "Well, you're uh, you're taking you know you're doing a little too much work there. There's an easier way to do what you're doing." Here is how I work with the FT8 um, w, WSJT program. Um, I'm gonna have that wrong. I'll know here in just a second. Here's how I work it around. The, uh, this this logging program will not interface with that program as far as rig control goes. Now, when I did the API, uh, that's how these two interface together. However, when you open up N3FJP first, it takes control of that port that the other program needs. So here's how, let's say I'm, I'm running um, sideband and I want to uh, switch over to uh, FT8. I'm going to close out N3FJP and I'm going to open up my FT8 program first. Um, I use the uh, JT Alert program, so I'll pop that up there so you can see it. It's uh, I've used it in some contests too, and it gives you a, a lot more information. Um, all right, so actually we'll and yeah, we'll put that on. You can kind of see that as it as it goes along. Um, so if this is your first time, you've downloaded the program. Um, and again, you don't have to have this up here. You can just use this down here. It's just a matter of uh, personal preference. There's been changes made to the WSJT program that has made this not as useful as it used to be, but there's still certain things I like about it better. Um, as you can see, it's popping up there. Uh, actually, if we'll go to 20 meters, I guarantee I'll, I'll get some befores and some new DXCCs and all kinds. This thing will voice alert you for, for things like that. Uh, may not be as needed for uh, field day, but uh, other contests, sure. All right, so let's go up here to uh, file, and we're going to go to our settings, and I'll bring that box in so you can see it. Um, I don't see any befores up there yet. All right, so everything's, uh, if you've used this before, it's pretty much set up. If it's not, you have to put your call and your grid in right there. All these settings down here are just a matter of personal preference uh, for your radio. Uh, some logging programs actually, uh, I know Ham Radio Deluxe Logger will actually, uh, the, or the HRD program will interface with this and it will read read the logging program as your radio. That doesn't happen with N3FJP that I have found. So again, I'm closed out of N3FJP. Um, I select my rig here, Yasu 991, uh, COM5. Change my baud rate. Everything else should still be the same. Hit the uh, test cap button. It pops up green. Everything's good there. Uh, if that works, the PTT is going to work. Um, audio should be your USB audio codec for both of these. Um, preference there. Uh, I uncheck prompt me to log QSO uh, and do log automatically. That will only work in contest mode. So when you revert back to just normal uh, QSO mode or whatever you want to call it, it's going to prompt you to log the QSOs. But if you leave that set like that, then when you do go into contest mode, you don't have to change anything. Um, down here, accept UDP request. This is what's going to interface your uh, program with your uh, the your FT8 program with your login program. Notice that port number 1100 was over on the N3FJP program. So you, you you turn that on. And we don't have to do anything with this. All this stuff is a matter of preference. Advanced, you come up here to Special Operating Activity, FT4, FT8, MSK144. You check that. And we're going to go with Field Day. And put in your exchange, which I'm going to be a 1 Delta. And boom, there you go. Whoops. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Gets me every time. And this thing will generate a little contest log and that kind of thing. All right. Now, now we've got all this set up. Before we start our first QSO, what we want to do is open up our N3FJP logging program. So I'm going to go back over here and click on my AWRL field day con contest log, and I'm going to open that up. Now, this little box is going to pop up. It says access to COM port 5 denied. 
Um, basically what that is is the uh, FTA program got it first. That's okay. Click OK. Don't worry about don't worry about the fact that it's not reading your frequency right or anything that of that nature just yet. What's going to happen is when you come over here to this program and let's say hopefully I can do this without making it transmit. There we go. So let's put his call in there, and as if we were going to make a field day contact with him, we're not. Slide over here. I shut my rig off. It wanted to start transmitting. Uh, turn off enable TX. All right, so we slide over here, and you see it's picked up his call in his section on field day when he's actually got his uh, class set up and everything. That will automatically pop in there. What happens next is when we complete that QSO successfully in the FT8 program and it logs it, it's going to read from the FT8 program not only his call, his class, his section, it's going to read the correct band, frequency, and mode. Um, even though this is showing the wrong one down here at the bottom, as you, as you log with those digital programs, as long as you have that... Uh, API interface turned on in both of your programs, it's going to log correctly. So uh, so don't worry, you know, if you look down there and you say, well, I'm on 40 meters and this thing's reading me as 15 meters, that's that's okay. Um, also, what will happen is uh, when you log that QSO, it'll change it down here and it'll stay there until you uh, log another QSO somewhere else anyway. Uh, all you have to do, if you want to go back to uh, your uh, sideband, uh, then just exit out of uh, your FT8 software and that thing froze up a little bit it's okay and then exit out of N3FJP and then just simply restart N3FJP it's going to tell me that because I turned my rig off uh, but there it is when I turn the rig back on everything's good if not actually it wasn't so there we go now that the rig is actually on it says I'm on 20 which uh, you can't see my rig but I'm on 20 so it's reading the frequency correctly and all that so that's all you got to do it's just a simple matter of uh, shutting the uh, software off and restarting the software that kind of thing uh, this program will interface with uh, FL Digi in the same manner using that uh, API interface, and it will actually. Um, and I can. I've already set mine up. It's set up with my main program, so let's see if it actually picks up. There it is. So it's actually reading the logging program um, and picking up the uh, the correct frequency. So if I want to work some CW or R. RTTY or anything like that um, and then all I have to do is come in here and uh, configure this in the same manner um, mainly set this video up for the uh, FT8 software so I, I don't have my information handy of how to set up FL Digi um, but it's as I remember it correctly I did it a long time ago and actually what happens is where I have the N3 FJP main logging program Every time I download one of their contest loggers, it seems to automatically work with FL Digi, so it's probably just working through that uh, API port. Um, so that's another neat feature about it, too. You don't have to keep resetting that particular thing. Uh, you don't have to reset the uh, FT8 stuff every single time. The only thing you have to do is when you download N3FJP is each uh, different contest logger. You just got to come in there and check that box right there and hit Done. And set up your uh, rig control, which for most should be fairly simple, and, and you're good to go. Uh, any questions or anything about this that, that I can help you with? Again, this is this is not any kind of uh, endorsed video or whatever by N3FJP. Uh, he may have he or someone else may have some better methods for doing the same things that I'm doing. And uh, if if you know of anything out there, contact me. My email address is good on this YouTube channel. Um, or if you have any questions and anything I can help you with to get you going for uh, field day, same thing. Email address is good on this YouTube channel. Uh, just give me a shout and uh, I'll be glad to uh, help you in any way I can. Uh, for now, this is uh, N4NT saying 7-3.